Hello and welcome to Gratitude Yoga Flow, where I encourage you to bring out your notebook and scribble down with intention all the things that you can think of at this moment that you are grateful for and things that you'd like to move some energy into. And um, I like to do that sometimes before my practices or before bed or or when I wake up and I have new ideas, I write things down and maybe you like that too. So if you would like to, I encourage you today to write down one to 10 things that you are grateful for on your notepad and then we'll put it right in front of our yoga mat and practice with it. So um, maybe you'd like to pause me right now. And from there and on, we're going to continue on with our yoga and I am just um, so grateful that you are here with me today and it is the week of Thanksgiving in America which um, often brings up gratitude themed weeks. Now this doesn't mean that it has to be Thanksgiving where you are at all to practice this because I feel like a gratitude practice can be done at any time. So um, thanks for being here and we're going to start by just sitting comfortably and we'll just give ourselves a few breaths and a little bit of stillness um, into our list of gratitude that is right in front of us onto the yoga mat. And I believe that practicing and pouring out energy into something that you wrote down will make a difference. So we'll sit with that for a moment and sit nice and tall onto our sit bones. Maybe rolling the shoulders back, taking the ears back and just sitting for a few moments. Anchoring into the heart of earth and anchoring into the heart of source and letting the front of the spine be a just a nice clear conduit of energy. Moving into a few breaths. Certainly keeping the breaths going for the whole practice, but let's just see if we can bring ourselves in just to the moment of breathing in and breathing out. We'll do five rounds. And slowly bringing the hands to the heart, bringing everything into the heart that we are grateful for and sealing it with an ohm and sending it out to whomever or whatever needs to receive that energy wavelength from us. And then we'll start our asana practice. Take a comfortable inhale. come to full offering out onto our belly. We'll just make our whole body this vessel of gratitude by coming onto our belly and taking the arms and palms forward, bringing the feet together and taking the forehead down to the mat, bringing ourselves all the way into the midline, pulling the belly in, belly button is engaged, arms forward and just offering out into your uh, paper, into your notebook or journal, of your gratitude list. And we'll just pour a little extra energy into it. One more breath right here. And then gently hands by the shoulders, tuck the toes under, come up to all fours, tabletop, arch the spine up to the sky. Check and see that your second finger is facing forward and your pinky is out towards the edge of the mat. And we'll just continue on with our half cow for our spine and get some nice, good fluidity going in towards the spine. Inhale and exhale. And a few more times right here. 
all the way from the tailbone, each and every vertebrae, lower back, middle, upper back, up towards the base of the skull. One more time. And then exhale from here, hands forward, keep the belly button engaged, come to Anahatasana, another pose where we're just offering full gratitude out to all the things that has carried us here together today. We'll just take it straight there. Come to Anahatasana, palms down, knees and hips are stacked, toes can be tucked under, can also be called puppy pose, half down dog. Few breaths right here. And then exhale, come with your feet together and come to child's pose. Pull and engage the belly button and then sit back down to the heels. Arms are active, forehead, third eye to the mat. Lift the upper arm bones, click all the 10 toes down, claw the fingertips. Give yourself a few breaths right here. And gently making your way back up. Take downward facing dog, stretching our right and our left calf. We start with the right side, sinking the right Achilles heel down, calf full stretch, coming up onto the left toes. And switching to the second side, taking your left heel down, getting a nice good stretch in the whole Achilles and the calf on that left side. And then give yourself a little walk right side left side inhale and exhale come over to plank pose bring your knees to the floor come all the way down and widen the hands and feet on each side of the mat lifting up into a low medium cobra and pulling the side body nice and long and lifting the chest shoulders back pull the ears back and exhale, take it all the way back down, hands by the shoulders, child's pose, big toes together, knees apart, downward facing dog, Adi Mukha Svanasana, tucking the toes under and coming and finding another version of down dog. There is always a new version. Each down dog is a little bit anew. There's always like a new spot that is engaged in our body. One more breath right here and then step the right foot between the hands, turn the left foot flat, Take the arms out to the side and come to two hands supported side angle. Right hip down towards the mat and the arms are out towards the side, left side at an angle out on the side of the mat. And we'll just elongate the side body. Two hands supported side angle. A few breaths right here. Knees stacked over ankle. And gently take the hands to the inside. Come up onto your left toes, step it back, downward facing dog, Adi Mukha Svanasana. And then step the left foot between your hands, take your right foot down and come with your hands over at an angle to the right side. Left knee stacked over the front ankle and toning into the right adductors, side body long. Engage the belly button and sending some good grounding signals to legs and feet. One more breath. And then inhale, exhale, hands to the inside. Turn your back toes, step it back to your downward facing dog. Come forward to plank pose, claw your fingertips, knuckles down, take your knees to the floor and lower all the way down. And inhale to your cobra. I like to come up onto the elbows and come to the fingertips for this one and bring the shoulder blades down on the back. Give yourself a little sway side to side and enjoy. The nice opening in the belly, the side body, the chest, the heart, elongating the spine. Exhale, bring it back down, push back, child's pose, big toes together, knees apart. And make your way to downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Press the palms, lift the upper arm bones, step the right foot between the hands, two straight legs, hands inside your right and come to two hands supported trikonasana so the right leg and the left leg is nice and straight and the arms are inside the right foot at an angle towards the left side and we press down the mounts of the big toes extend the legs with a slight micro bend in towards the knees lift the upper arm bones 
give yourself a few breaths right here. One more breath and then inhale and exhale. Come with your hands to the inside, turn your back foot, step it back, engage the belly button, downward facing dog, second side, take your left foot between the hands, two straight legs, two hand supported trikonasana with your left leg straight, your right leg straight, slightly bend in towards the knees, long side body and getting a good awareness and feel for how our hamstrings and adductors are doing today. Arch the spine, inhale and exhale, and then gently take the hands back to the inside of your left foot, flip your right foot, come to downward facing dog, spread the finger, second finger forward, make your way over to plank pose, shoulders and wrists are stacked, take the knees to the floor and lower all the way down, widen the hands, cobra, inner shoulder to outer shoulder, and exhale, bring it back down, push back, child's pose. Nice big wave of the spine, unleashing any energies that is stuck with each and every breath, with each and every move. Downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. So we can fully get into that grateful feeling of the heart and sending it out and really like feeling it. And that way we will expand a little bit bigger and the notes that we wrote down to be grateful for, they will, they will kind of come to life. They will start to be a nice, um, strong feeling in the Anahatasana heart chakra, the unstruck part. We'll go in there and unravel with each and every pose. Come up onto the toes, bend the knees, look between the hands and take a step over. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, hinge and fold. Take the hands onto the sacrum, roll the shoulders up and back. Press the four corners of the feet down, top of the head to the mat, and maybe extending the arms up towards the sky, shoulders away from the ears. Uttanasana, hands clasped. A few breaths right here, really anchoring down into the legs, into the feet, raising the sacrum a little higher than the lower back. A few more breaths right here. And gently release hands to the sacrum hands to the hips and then we'll come all the way up to standing and release the hands and come to the middle of the mat, bend your knees and we'll just give ourselves a few swings back and forth, clearing any stagnation in the energy field and feeling light and free and open and ready to send out a whole bunch of grateful notes to each and every one that we know, to each and every one that touched our life and to each and every one that we're practicing yoga with today. We'll do that too. We'll do a few more right here. Inhale and exhale. Loosening up into the hips, to the waist, lower back, and gently make it all the way back to the center and come to the front of the mat. Feet can be hip width apart, arms coming up to the sky, Urdhva Hastasana, hands to sky, exhale, hinge and fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, step to plank pose. Come to Chaturanga, elbows bent. Inhale, lift up into your upward facing dog. And exhale, pull back, downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Step the right foot between the hands and come and hinge forward. Take the front knee over the ankle and the toes and then exhale, heel down, toes up and inhale, Coming forward, strengthening through the heart space. Exhale, heel down, toes up. Anything that's waiting for us outside of our mat that is meant for us. We'll just we'll just say yes and drink it in. One more breath and exhale. Take it all the way back down. Take the knee to the floor. Inhale, Anjasana. Come forward and up, and take the heel of the hands together. Come to Padma Mudra. Lift forward, lift up, Anjasana quad stretch. Exhale, take it all the way back down, hands to the mat, step back, down dog, plank pose, chaturanga, inhale, up dog, and exhale, bring it back to downward facing dog, left foot between the hands, come nice and deep where it's comfortable for you, with 
a comfortable feeling. Front knee over the ankle and the second toe, and then we'll take it back, door side flexion on that left foot, and come forward, inhale, exhale, heel down, toes up, and inhale, bring it all the way forward and up, and exhale, and we'll take it all the way down, right here, and take that right knee down, tuck the toes, arms to the sky, heel of the hands together, and come forward with your chest, with your heart, on the asana, Padma Mudra, the mudra of offering out, and the mudra of receiving. One more breath, exhale, release, hands to the mat, step it back, down dog, please. Plank pose, chaturanga, inhale, up dog, exhale, down dog. Give yourself another breath right here, sorting out arms, legs, and the front and the back and the side body with a few nice anchoring in breaths. Come up onto the toes, bend the knees, take a step or a hop over to the hands, inhale, long spine, exhale, fold, press the feet, inhale, sweep it all the way up, arms to the sky, and hands to the heart, and exhale, bring it back down. We'll take it up one more time, exhale, hinge and fold, we'll do one more Surya Namaskar, fold forward, inhale, long spine, exhale, place the hands, step to downward facing dog, plank pose, Chaturanga, inhale, up dog, exhale, pull back, downward facing dog, right foot between the hands, high crescent lunge, squeeze your glutes, lift your belly button, arms up to the sky, and we'll stay right here with hands, shoulder width apart, bending the front knee, stretching fully into that left quad and hip flexor, few more breaths, and exhale, take it back down, hands to the floor, step it back, downward facing dog, second side, left foot between the hands, squeeze your glutes, your midline, your abdominals, inhale, sweep your arms up, high crescent lunge, sinking down and lifting up all at the same time, and exhale, bring it all the way back down, step it back to downward facing dog, plank pose, chaturanga, Inhale, up dog, and exhale, come back to downward facing dog. From here, we'll come back down onto the knees, all the way to the belly for our full offering out pranam, palms together, full body mudra. We'll summon all of that that we moved around, bring it into our full offering out of gratitude. One more breath. And exhale, release hands by the shoulders, tuck the toes, come to tabletop and then to downward facing dog, please. Take the feet to the hands, inhale, exhale, long spine and hinge and fold. Expand the back body, hands to hips, elbows to sky. Come all the way up to standing and let's take the arms all the way up. Take your right wrist over to the left side and get into that connective tissue fascia onto that whole right side of the body. We'll hold a little extra so we make sure that it kind of takes in and can bend your knees and so that you have your hips and your ankles stacked above and below each other. One more breath and then bring it all the way up. You should feel it all the way into that lumbar area, the lumbar spine, so by lifting the belly button and engaging it, then it kind of also expands into the whole back body, not just the side. A few more breaths right here. Inhale, exhale. And gently making your way all the way back up. Excellent. And then release the hands and come to the front of the mat. I'm going to come over here. We'll start with the right foot so I don't turn my back to you. Um, you can be on any side of the mat that you like. Let's take the arms up to the sky. We'll go through a few side angles and then exhale, hinge and fold. Uttanasana, moving some deeper layers in the body. Inhale, long spine. Exhale, step to plank pose, please. Shoulders and wrists are stacked. We can stay right here and hold our plank. 
we can come to the knees or not knees in chaturanga which is slightly lifted from the mat inhale to up dog lifting the knees and bringing ourselves up and exhale pull back downward facing dog step the right foot between the hands left foot flat squeeze glutes lower abs warrior two rising all the way up for virabhadrasana two arms out to the side flip the right palm take it up to the sky take your right um, inner thigh with your left arm and lift it all the way up long side body lift the belly button to protect the lower back a few more breaths right here and then we'll take that whole long side body and take our right fingers down to the floor and left arm up and come to extended side angle bicep over the ear full extension long side body and then exhale hands down to the floor turn the back foot step back to your downward facing dog take your plank pose and then take your version either if it's knees down if it's cobra if it's up dog exhale bring it back downward facing dog step your left foot between the hands rise up warrior two from your glutes from your legs from your lower abs arms out to the side flip your left palm up take it up to the sky take the right arm and find your left inner thigh or hold on to your sweater or simply keep your arm onto that right leg long left side body engage your lower abs one more breath and then exhale fingers to the floor release the right arm and take it up and over for extended side angle push into the right foot take the gaze underneath the upper arm a few more breaths right here and exhale release hands to the side flip the back foot downward facing dog and come to plank pose lower chaturanga inhale upward facing dog rolling the shoulders up and back and exhale downward facing dog come up onto the toes bend the knees look between the hands take a step inhale long spine exhale fold uttanasana forward fold take your hands to the hips come all the way up to standing and release the hands excellent let's step wide with the feet open the feet wide and come to feet wide apart prasartha padottanasana opening up a little bit more in towards our shoulders long side body and anchoring into the legs let's take the arms all the way out to the side and just kind of check that your wrists and your ankles are stacked above and below each other take the hands to the hips lift nice and tall and exhale from here hinge and fold forward top of the head towards the floor elbows to the back feeling grateful for steady breath for steady stance and for a nice steady pose that will take us all kinds of places steadiness into the four corners of the feet which in its turn also really stimulates all the 7,000 nerve endings in each foot. We'll just be grateful for all of it, for our whole body, for taking us to the mat today. Press into the hands and come all the way back up to standing. That should have created a little bit of warmth into the whole body. And then from here, we're gonna um, maybe proceed with a headstand or maybe proceed with a um, tripod stand. We'll see how it feels. Let's uh, lift the heart up and exhale, hinge and fold forward. And take this time around. First, we lengthen the hips away and lengthen the spine and anchor in towards our uh, legs and keep that nice feeling in the legs. And then take the hands, the heel of the hands aligned with the heel of the feet, arch the spine and take the top of the head towards the floor. And then clawing those fingertips and maybe we'll take our um, knees to the elbows and feet together for our tripod stand maybe the legs comes out to the side and maybe the legs comes up for headstand shirshasana anchoring in top of the head mount of the big toes tailbone long belly button holds in and then we'll slowly make our way back down 
and maybe we'll come back to that tripod, knees to the upper arms, feet together, and then feet all the way down to the floor, and then extend, and come to the front, and take your downward facing dog, and from down dog, come into a child's pose. Big toes together, knees apart, arms forward, third eye to the mat. So whichever pose that you took, you'll just make sure that all those components find its nice new place in our body. A few breaths right here, inhale and exhale. And gently come all the way back up onto your knees and your hands and come down onto the forearms, palms together, forearms onto the mat and the elbows and the shoulders are stacked. Arch the belly all the way in and then we'll make our way up to a dolphin pose or another version of half down dog. And from here, let's give ourselves a couple of shoulder flosses this way and that way, up and down, upper arm bones in, and then we push them back out, all while we create a lot of space for the shoulder socket to move freely. Inhale and exhale. And then slowly taking the knees back down, take the hands around the yoga mat, scrunch up that yoga mat, and take your feet on each side of your mat and come to Tiger dog, frog dog, bend your knees nice and deep. Lift your sacrum higher than your lower back. And it's like we are really um, uh, kind of accelerating that upper back bend. And the gaze can come between the hands. And it's like we get that upper back to release, upper back to lengthen, straighten the arms, and then exhale. Take your heels down, the gaze is forward. And taking your hands all the way back down nice hmm. give yourself three nice shakti waves here nice big waves on the spine inhale and exhale and then step the right foot to between the hands come to pars rottanasana pyramid pose building some good strength and moving a whole lot of energy by hugging skin to muscle and muscle to bone Lengthen the belly and then hinge and fold over the front leg for pyramid pose or pars vottanasana, stretching out the whole back side of the body. Another breath right here. And then gently come up onto the back toes, bend both knees and give yourself a little push forward for warrior three. Lifting the left glute up, lifting the belly in, maybe lifting the hands off of the mat, keeping the standing leg slightly bent and hands can stay at the heart. Hands can extend forward. We'll stay a few breaths right here. And then exhale, taking our hands back down, stepping all the way back and take downward facing dog, going through your vinyasa, your flow, if you'd like, taking plank, either staying in plank or lowering chaturanga. Inhale, up dog or cobra. And exhale, bringing it back to downward facing dog. Left foot between the hands. Come to Parasvottanasana. Pyramid pose. Long spine, side body. Awareness into the belly button. And then we hinge and fold forward. Shoulder blades away from the ears. Press into the mounds of the big toes. A few breaths right here. And then to come up onto your right toes, bend into both knees, kind of like a sprint, but it's not going to be a sprint, but we're going to just hug the muscles in and anchor down into that standing leg and send our right leg up into warrior one. Slightly bending into the standing leg. So we have our hip and our shoulder and our um, ankles stacked above and below each other and then we'll raise ourselves up here to warrior three and exhale release the hands and step it all the way back to downward facing dog Adimuta Svanasana take your vinyasa inhale exhale bring it all the way up 
and exhale, take it back, down dog. Come up on the toes, bend the knees, step a hop forward, inhale, long spine, exhale, fold, Uttanasana. Come all the way to standing, hands to hips, root it down through the legs and then raise nice and tall and come to standing. You can come to the middle of the mat. We're gonna wave our arms a little bit more like wings. So we're gonna take the arms all the way out. So slightly bend into the knees and then take your hands on each shoulder blade and arch the spine. And then we'll inhale, bring it all the way up, ground and root and then exhale, squeeze each shoulder blade. And we'll just alternate like that a few times. Inhale and exhale and inhale and exhale, tapping into that upper back for some more half down dogs and maybe maybe a forearm stand. Inhale and exhale, and inhale and exhale. And then gently take it all the way out and take the hands to the heart. And we'll take a moment to stand right here. I'm just anchoring in to the heart center, into the center of gratitude. Gratitude for being right here and right now. I'm grateful for you to practice with me. I'm grateful for my whole list of gratitude that I wrote down before class. And gently open the eyes and release the hands. Come to the front of the mat and inhale, take the arms all the way up. Exhale, hinge and fold, Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, long spine. And exhale, step back, downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. And then from here, come down onto the knees and we'll just have a little talk, a little chat. Um, we're gonna do one thing with a block or a pillow onto our upper back and then maybe we'll go turn our mat to a, we just need like a mat with a part for a wall. If you would like to have some support for the wall for our Pinchamayarasana that's coming up. But before we even get there, maybe you just wanna kind of scan your room of where to go. Before we get there, we'll take our block. We're just doing like previews. We'll take our block uh, the middle way or take it the lower way, depending on how it feels. And then from here, we'll sit down and take the block right below the shoulder blades and above the kidneys. So it's in that upper middle back where it sometimes can feel a little tight, the place where we are usually the least bendable. The lower back bends a lot more than the upper back. So we'll have a little chance to lay onto this block and take the elbows up and see if we can find a little extra mobility into that upper back that we were kind of doing our shoulder push-ups into earlier where we do that, did our half down dog. A few breaths right here. And we keep holding on to the belly button at the same time. And we stay right here. Inhale and exhale. And slowly bringing it back up, hands by the legs and come all the way back up. Take the block to the side. And then from here, take your downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. At this point, you have moved your mat to a comfortable place where you can feel supported by a wall if you so decide to come up into Pinchamayarasana. We'll, um, we'll just play around with it and have fun with it and get to kick our legs a little bit. Step the right foot or left foot between the hands so that you end up towards the wall. And then from here, take the forearms down and come to your um, forearm downward facing dog or preparation for Pinchamayarasana. So I like to have the forearms all the way down and the palms together and the elbows are stacked right below the shoulders. So it's right here and it's right there. Let's do that and we'll see how we feel about that. And then we'll take one leg and walk it up to the air. We look between the forearms, we're looking down, we lift with the inner thighs, we lift with the belly button, and then from there, we lift it up to our forearm balance, 
and you can take your feet to the wall, you can take your feet off the wall, and then we'll find our balance here somewhere and warm it up into that upper back. Inhale and exhale. And slowly making our way down and coming to our child's pose. This time around, let's bring the arms right at the side of the legs and just coming into a nice little child's pose kind of, I like to call it like a ball version, like rolling like a ball, but we're all, all the way facing down. Hugging in, getting a nice release on the spine, on the shoulders, having some good energy into the back. And then gently come all the way onto your belly, please. We're just gonna come belly down, taking the right arm out and releasing the shoulder. Kickstand your left foot behind you. Breathing into that, any area of that right shoulder that feels like it needed a little extra oxygen from carrying us in Prince Malasana. And slowly take it all the way down and second side, take your left arm out, kickstand the right leg behind you and take the breath into any of the tight areas in the left shoulder that might need a little extra oxygen for release after carrying us. A few more breaths right here. And gently come all the way back to the belly, hands by shoulders, Anahatasana. We'll come to all fours and then we'll send our arms, hands forward. And we were here earlier, full offering out with our um, forehead, third eye to the mat. Maybe this time around, we'll take the shin to the mat and the chest to the mat. And tapping in a little bit more in towards our heart center, into the center where we hold our gratitude for each and every one of us. One more breath. And gently come all the way back up. Tabletop, downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Heels down, lift the upper arm bones, anchor in. I would even suggest to move your feet in slightly so that you have your feet and your hands anchor down and they can engage into the belly button. And just stay nice and anchored in and expand the back body. A few more breaths right here and gently step the feet to the hands take your feet out of hip width apart almost so that they're as wide as your mat make it comfortable and then we kind of come down to malasana and release the lower back take your um, thumbs to your third eye and bow in releasing the seat releasing the spine releasing the neck Grounding the femurs to release the lower back. Let's take a few more breaths right here. And gently release the hands and we're going to come all the way down to a seat. I'm going to turn this way because we are making our way into a back bend in a few poses and I would like for our hearts to be pouring out towards our list of gratitude because I do think it makes a difference on the direction. So um, from here, let's come all the way down onto our backs, please. And then we'll take a little pause right here and we'll take the hands and uh, push the femurs away to ground and to lift and to lengthen. One breath right here, and then inhale, take it all the way in, knees into the chest, hands underneath. We're gonna roll it all the way up and come into Navasana to boat pose. We can point, loink the toes, and we can pull the belly button in. You can most certainly stay right here and hold. You can take your arms out, you can lift your legs up and come into your 
boat pose for today. You just kind of hop on into your boat and hold everything in nice and steady. Full determination. And exhale, release. Take your hands back down and send your uh, legs back down. Now we come back down and take your hands underneath your buttocks. From here, we're going to come forward and lift the heart and come into fish pose. And take our top of the head towards the mat or ponytail. Uh, make sure it's comfortable. And then from here, we're going to either stay here or lift our legs up. And maybe from here, we might even lift our hands up and come to Matsyasana with our arms and the legs up and lifting into the heart. Palms together, feet together, extending and hugging in all at the same time. Hugging in, extending. One more breath. Exhale, take your feet back down. Take your hands by your shoulders and dive into that back bend from the heart, from the bend that we came from in fish pose. Urdhva Dhanurasana or any variation of back bend that works for you. One back bend. We'll choose one that works for us. One that we can tap into the heart center that holds gratitude for all beings, for all things. And then exhale, walking your feet back out and come all the way back down. Bring your feet forward and take your hands again onto the tops of the femurs, extending out, away, rounding, lengthening, arms out to the side and take your knees side to side for windshield wiper. Inhale and exhale. We'll do that a few times back and forth. And then we'll leave the knees over to the left side. So one knee is in the center and one knee is out to the side. Left ankle over the right knee. Few breaths right here. And release and take it up and over, second side. Take your right knee to the side, outside of the mat, the left knee goes straight down onto the mat, hip flexor stretch, twisting, lower back, right ankle over the left knee. One more breath right here. And gently release the right foot and then come all the way back up into your center. Hands underneath the knees. Hug it in. Sacrum stays down this time around because this time around we like to elongate the spine. So sacrum is down and it's like we're lifting the chest and it lifts the lower back. And we get to kind of put the lower back into its nice and whole new super even curved spine that we are um, finding some good opening and lengthening in right here. So this should be like a little critter being able to kind of crawl under. One more breath. And then take your arms inside your legs and hands outside the feet. And then legs up for happy baby pose. And the same goes for here. Let's see if we can have the sacrum down and the lower back engaged. If not, maybe even a little bit lifted. Now that's a lot of hugging in into the belly button. It's a lot of rotation of the hips. Um, but it's the opposite of bringing the lower back down to the mat and kind of pressing on it. I would like for us to engage it and lengthen it this time around to after our back bends to put that whole spine back to a nice new place to move from. It's like a natural curvature of the spine. One more breath right here and then slowly bring the knees into the chest. And we'll hug it all the way in and come to a seat, please. Taking the legs out for Upavishta Konasana. Extending the legs out comfortably, just so that we can find a perfect and comfortable seat for our sit bones, nice and even. We'll come to the yoga mat every day or every practice 
to even out our body, right? So we'd like to see if we can find that even seat onto the sit bones evenly. And that should adjust any sort of alignment on the spine that maybe we needed to. We'll stay right here just for another moment, just to let that seat anchor, the spine be lifted, and then we'll take it over to the right side and walk our way over for our um, final stretching over to the right leg. Elbows out to the side, seat is down. And then we'll take it all the way up and over to the second side. Take the arms over to the left side, belly button lifts in, and then we all take our elbows to the side, elongate out, and untie any knots in that right lower back waist area. And bring it all the way back up. Turn yourself to the front. Come forward. Upavishta Konasana. Either we'll sit right here or we'll take it forward. Make a pillow out of the hands. Heels down. Toes up. Active. And gently bring it all the way back up. Take your hands underneath the knees and then we'll cross at our ankles. I'm going to bring in a pillow to sit on and then we'll come back to our comfortable seat and sit for a few moments together, like um, five breaths together we'll sit and then we'll have Shavasana if you would like to. And we also have a chant um, to close our practice together today, but let's take a comfortable seat. And if there's anything that comes to mind, then that you like to write down in your gratitude journal then anytime. Highly encouraged to write anything down that we like to see happen or that we like to send out into the world. And gently bring the hands to the heart, keeping the nice stillness that we created. <clears throat> the chant that I'm going to sing with you is an Anusara chant that I learned many years ago that just has such a nice, vibrant um, melody to it. And it is honoring the guru within ourselves. Um, the guru that means the person that or the entity or the energy that we uh, always have inside of us that we can listen to that has all the wisdom for us. We'll sing to that if you would like to. The text should be rolling underneath here at any moment. We'll start with one own together. Take a comfortable inhale. Om. Om Namah Shivaya Gurave Satchitananda Murtaye Nirsh Prapanchaya Shantaya Niralambaya Thank you so much for joining me for this gratitude yoga flow practice. I hope you had fun with it. And uh, please share with your friends this video, anyone that you think would like it and practice with it. And also hit subscribe to help me grow my yoga channel here on YouTube. I would love that. 
and uh, more videos is coming your way very soon. For now, let's take a Shavasana and then maybe we'll open up our gratitude journal again and write down another 10 things that we feel grateful for, that we have gratitude for. There is usually like a whole line of things that is waiting and sometimes we just have to write them down and then they become even stronger for us and um, people will show up for us that we are feeling grateful towards. So thank you so much and namaste. Have a beautiful day, a beautiful week, and I'll see you very soon again. Let's take Shavasana. Pressing the head down, adjusting the shoulder blades and letting the toes and the fingers just relax and curl up, palms is off and shoulder blades are supporting us underneath. And you can stay here as long as you feel like you need your rest and recovering from the practice. Namaste.